as it's apple time of year and we've been given a lot of nice apples by our neighbours we've been making various preserves to put down for the winter and some of them will store for a long long time if you don't get around to using them but one of the nicest is apple jelly and it couldn't be easier to make it comes out a beautiful colour considering you start off with little green sour apples and it's very very easy to set because there's a lot of pectin in apples particularly crab apples so this was made a couple of days ago and this was made with a mixture of cooking apples and crab apples if you want to you can flavour it with mint cinnamon cloves any kind of flavouring you like just to give it a little bit of a flavour but you can also make it as a byproduct from other preserving so on here we've got a beautiful batch of apple and onion chutney cooking away it's a shame you can't smell it it is absolutely the most divine smell but the pan on the left if it just looks like a load of skins that's exactly what it is when you peel and core a big batch of apple for freezing or cooking or in this case making chutney don't throw away the skins and the cores put them in a pan cover them with enough water to just cover them up bring them to the boil simmer them for about an hour and then you strain them and to make an apple jelly you simply add a pound of sugar to a pint of juice and then boil it up until setting point is reached and put it in jars it couldn't be simpler you can find jam making methods online I will put a text on with a quick recipe but this will make quite a few jars of jelly and it's things that would have otherwise been thrown away once your cooked apples or in this case apple peelings are soft pour the whole pan full into a jelly bag you don't need an expensive one you can make one like this one from a clean new dishcloth or you can buy jelly bags but don't go wasting your money on a jelly bag stand it's, it's just something that clutters up the cupboard it might get used a few times a year but all you have to do is hang your bag on a cupboard doorknob above somewhere where you can safely leave the bowl to drip and we've also got another little method that we use If we've got more than one batch on the go at a time, we rig up the camera tripod in the spare room, put the bowl under it, hang the bag on the tripod and just leave it to drip overnight. You have to let it drip naturally. If you squeeze the bag, you'll start getting some pulp through and that will make your jelly cloudy. For a nice clear jelly, just use the juice, not the pulp. Once you've strained your juice and you add the sugar to it, bring it to the boil as you would make in normal jam. Keep it on a rolling boil until it reaches setting point and then you put it into clean jars and this will keep for a long, long time. This mint jelly is already two years old and it's absolutely delicious. As long as the pots seal nicely, it will keep for a long, long time and it just gets more and more delicious as you keep it longer. So we've already made clove jelly and ordinary apple jelly this year. And the next lot's going to be mint jelly, so we've got plenty to go with our lovely lamb.